Hi, I've got two servers in front of me. The one is the Generation 7 HP micro server and the one on the right is the Generation 8 micro server. This one I've used for many years and I'm going to just show you the difference between the two and discuss a few items about these two servers. The first thing is just looking at the appearance. The Generation 8 is uh, got a plastic finish here. It's got a front cover with holes in it for breathe for ventilation. Same as the Generation 8. The Generation 7 has a full-size DVD writer area. It is four USB 2s on the front. Um, to get to the hard drives, you needed to have a key. You opened up the, the front door like this. It's These are screws for the hard drives. There was some additional. It did come with a uh, Torx screwdriver which i have lost but i looked something like this this is just a replacement one then the drives it says it initially it could take a maximum of eight terabytes although i have installed more than that with newer versions of software and bios updates the drives fitted in as such you could put four drives in here uh, not hot swappable then if you look closely, you'll see another USB there. Um, inside, you can see the PCIe card. That was actually my graphics card. Uh, it was very challenging to slide this board out. Uh, it's very snug in this unit. Um, right, looking at the back. Here's the cooling fan for the four hard drives. You've got your gigabit Ethernet, your two additional USB ports, a monitor port, eSATA. Now, in my case, I used a, an additional uh, network interface card because I had a lot of problems with this one uh, for Windows 8 and Windows 10. So this was worked fine. Um, this one gave me a lot of issues. Um, then here's my graphics card uh, to get audio i use hdmi there's the fan for the little power supply uh, which has proven very reliable to open the unit you would unscrewed this uh, thumb knob here and you'd have to have the door open and you could slide this top like that let's put that over there and you can see inside here okay it's a bit dusty and you can see this is a SATA cable and the SATA cable would plug in on the there was a SATA port inside here you can see it the yellow going in there right um moving to the or maybe i should just discuss the specs of this quickly this one was also an entry level these are both entry level options you could get uh, ones that were more um higher specs this one had an AMD uh, Neo 54L processor. It was 2.2 gigahertz. But the thing I liked the most about this one, it was the, that chip, that AMD chip, only used 15 watts. Um, in terms of the RAM, you could uh, there's two DIMM slots here. Um, you could you could use two. The weight of this was almost seven kilograms. Now. Moving to the generation 8, this one is also an entry level one. It comes with a Intel Celeron dual core 2.3 gigahertz, uh, 35 watts chip. And this is what it looks like here. Here's the, it comes with that little um, uh, Torx uh, screwdriver. You just clip it like that. This one has already, I've already installed the drive in here, as you can see. And uh, also, it's, it's specifically written here, not hot swappable. And this is what it looks like without the drive. Okay, the construction is very nice. Uh, it's got a almost like a, a, a matte black finish. And if we turn it around, 
you will see there were two there were two uh, USB ports on the front and now there are two at the back and two USB 3 so that's already six USB ports there's your monitor cable uh, monitor output VGA and there's uh, your gigabit Ethernet uh, port 1 and port 2 it's also got an ILO dedicated chip this is a great feature allows you to remote control the server specifically maybe you had a power outage and the ups backup wasn't long enough and the whole server went down you can actually restart the server through this ilo chip right to uh, port to open the unit you unscrew these thumb knobs then you pull it back like that and then you want to go straight up like that now looking inside right if you look closely you can see a micro SD slot there another USB port here there's your PCIe uh, card slot there's the ILO dedicated chip then you've got a SATA port it's not an extra one it is for the CD-ROM or the DVD-ROM which or DVD writer which would be here I did not opt to go for uh, the slimline DVD writer for the reason that it was quite expensive versus the actual price of this uh, whole server. The whole server cost me 3,400 Rand, including the RAM. So that's, call it $300. Brand new. And then there's the power supply. You can see the specs of the power supply there. Right, then looking at the other side, you can see the RAM. It came installed with 4 gig of gigs of RAM. And if you are using Windows Server, you should use ECC uh, registered RAM. And these cables here are, they feed into the back. They're the power cable for the hard drives and the data cable. And they run through there. They're, they're, they're actually not to be, there's nothing to do with them. They're just wired that way. The power cable, this is the power cable probably for the slimline DVD writer. And um, you would probably have to supply your own SATA port. I mean your SATA cable. Alright, so I'm going to install Windows 10 on this. I'm actually going to just use it as a Na uh, NAS. I'm also going to install uh, Linux. I'm going to try and see how it runs and compare it to this unit um, one of the my only one of my criticisms of this unit is it took a very long to boot for some reason um, and uh, Windows 8 ran very nicely on it and uh, I'm now going to install Linux on it and run it just as a NAS for port NAS